Greetings and salutations. This is Flash, somebody at the dork table. <laughs> I was reading the chat, so I'm just coming on, getting started here, doing the without Vinny thing and the without Mary thing. So, Grimner puts us out on the interweb somewhere. You can pick up the show all kinds of places. <laughs> I usually get it when I listen back. I listen at um, the bit shoot thing works out pretty good for me. Um, I like that. I like Spreaker. So now that I got choices, hey, I feel like I'm, I have choices. What the hell's going on? Okay, I'm stalling so I can type the stuff in here to the uh, Rocket Broadcaster Pro Edition. So Grim has his uh, stuff from me that I have to do. And he don't get stuck trying to do it after the fact. And there we go. So, Let's see, we're at the reallibertymedia.com chats where base this stuff out of and see what's going on, see who's in there today. But um, outside of the Spreaker and um, being on BitChat, I'm surprised anybody you know, really cares what anyone's opinion is about anything right now. Well, let's we'll say hi to the Real Liberty Media chat room. <coughs> cough, cough. We've got... Let me check my volume here. We've got uh, Byerman and Grimner, <coughs> Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Anti, Art Underground, Chloe, Chalcedony, Chloe, Cyborg Noodle, Echelon, me, Graham. She's probably not here. I think she had a. She was saying on the radio. She's only got a little bit of time left to actually work out in the yard and get get stuff done. So she's probably still not free on Saturday yet. Hey, Graham Z, whether you're here or not. And uh, we got Gromit, <laughs> IB Don C, IB Don C again, Java Doctor 2, Hansel, Kozu. Well, we got bots up the ass, don't we? Uh, Layer 8, hey, Pox, Poxapod, Poxaphone. There's more. Pone Sauce, Rain. RLM Fluke. Hey, Rob Works, the Earl of Bubbler. Uh, Rome's Skittle. Vinny. Uh, we got the Phantom. The Phantom at the bottom. I wonder what this is all about. Maybe I, I, I'm reading something wrong, but I'm just reading the list. Asmo 2. Colfax 101. Uh, Dakota. Frumpy 2. Jays 9's Jays from Scotland. Uh, Sock Puppet and Woodrow, our very own unassumed person living somewhere in near Tucson, but won't say where, just in case you want to go find him. He's hiding in the desert. Good luck. Uh, anyway, so I did a really, maybe I'll just do a short show this week to make up for the fuck up last week. Ended up smoking a little bit more than I planned to, I suppose, and, and what I thought was two turned out to be almost three. <laughs> so I've conquered my fear of doing this shit by myself, I suppose, but it's it's still kind of strange. Anyhow, I went up to the pub to have a couple beers. It's, a pub. it's not even a pub here. It's, it's a, I don't know what it is here now. I have to ask Cirque for a definition on bar in Denmark. Uh, look at the RLM is all firing up bubblers and having a good time. The love chat, she is back. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I was thinking about a topic, you know, and me and Mary and Vince have covered so much over, you know, the time we've been on the radio. I was given thought to why people that are as good as like um, Clint, uh, what was it? I don't, don't know the names very well. Uh, Richardson, I think, but the 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 message the guy gave and the information was may, way more important to me than his name. But he had a pretty good uh, sized audience for being off the cuff like he is, and he decided to give up the radio. I've heard a lot of people. I've thought of doing it myself a couple times. Just you get frustrated, I think, because there's nothing to teach anyone. You know, we're just passing on second-hand information from the government <laughs> so you know because they're going to put Kavanaugh in the Supreme Court and that's going to change everything <laughs> so, I mean how they spent a, a lifetime convincing people that it, it was better to uh, 
decide if you need an abortion than to keep your pants on, basically, and not take all that shit seriously. So society got exactly what it wanted through the voting public, or so they think, because I think that no matter what you vote for, the government's going to do what it wants and just claim you voted for it. You hired them. They are your you know, servants. They, they do what you need them to do for you in your absence because, well, they're important and they can sit in those chairs. You can't. <laughs> sure like to see all the documents at one time so I could find out just what exactly all this government bullshit entails because as I've gotten older, I've unleashed some real interesting little tidbits and it led me to the topic that I wanted to, to really give a lot of attention to on this dork day. <laughs> Where are we at? The 6th of October, 2018. And on this dork day, honesty is, is what got my attention. And I'm thinking of it in terms of something really different than usual. Well, my, not my usual, but the usual people's. Some people don't like normal, so we'll use usual. Um. Most people seem to think of honesty in terms of black and white. And then as I've grown up, I've noticed that different people have different values regarding honesty based on you know their upbringing, where they came from, and how they were taught to deal with this, that, and the other. But the variations overall are pretty minuscule. You know, I mean, you don't look across the room and have to think about who you're not going to kill because, hey, I could go to prison for that. No, it's more normal to not think of murdering somebody else than it is to actually think about it. Well, unless, of course, you're a TV buff like me, and then you see it on TV every five minutes. Somebody on the block's getting murdered, and the, the cop on the next block is solving the crime in 24 hours. And then it goes to court, and they get their trial, and life in prison, or you know, the death penalty, or whatever the, fuck the flavor is of the week. And still, honesty, I don't, I don't think uh, people in large groups are created, maybe not created to be, but the way that we operate our food and our water such and such, we're never going to get the results that we're expecting out of the actions that we think we're participating in. So, eh, I take a back seat to all the society and the voting and banking and ruling and owning and all the all that list of all those things that everybody you know we get suckered into believing that's the way when we're little you know so that when you're a grown-up you can stomp the next guy's face in and, and not have a conscience about it doesn't really it's part of the thing you just got to do this it doesn't matter if he has to go you know get less because you're taking his job what matters is that you get his job, and that's that. That's what we are. So mm. dealing with that, thinking that we live in an honest world is it's kind of like an oxymoron, isn't it? I mean, I think so. Maybe the rest of you see this world in a light that I'm just not capable of seeing it in. But <coughs> Excuse me. But the honesty level that we live in as a collective is... If my kids acted that way, I would have slapped them where they stood, and I was not even a violent guy. I never even hit them. But if they would have done the things that society says is acceptable, I would have probably got pissed off and done some ass whooping, you know. But see, I didn't raise my children to behave the way society expected me to, and well, it caused a lot of riff, caused me two divorces in the long run, but.
I was originally taught education was a gateway, you know, to uh, a better way to deal with it. Yeah, I know. I hit my damn button again. I, I leaned on it. I'm moving this thing where I can see it, so I quit blanking my damn uh, show out. I did this last time, too. My last weakness to conquer is playing with the buttons. But Anyway, this whole honesty thing's got me baffled because what is honest to one person isn't honest to the other 99. And so on and so on and so on. You're always going to find somebody in a group of people that whatever the social convention is, they're going to disagree with it. Or they'll only go along with it because it's a social convention and that's what they're for. Uh, you know, an agreement, a social agreement to behave in, in a certain fashion amongst your peers. But somehow they've managed to mix the rules with some form of honesty. You know, like I think that we're trained as little kids to see a rule and attach that to the concept of it, this is the honest. Yeah, I know, Kate. I'm I'm sorry. I I'm I screwed this up last time too. Anyway, but we're told one thing, and in the, in, the, in the long run, over a period of time, it always turns out to be either that was part of like that which you said but about 90% off, and it turns out to be some form of a lie. So where does the honesty come in? And what does obeying a rule have to do with being an honest or dishonest person in the first place? You know, There's some things that it's beyond the pale to believe we need to be told it's wrong, like Mary goes on about stealing. Okay, I understand that. When you steal something, it's very simple. You take what's not yours. I don't feel the necessity to go into great lengthy detail about defining it. Um, I still call, call it just a matter of honesty. If you're honest, you wouldn't think of doing things to other people that would cause them problems. So, therefore, it's led me down the road to, to recognize in the societies that I live in, there it functions based on dishonesty. Because nobody trusts anyone. Got cameras. You got uh, in some societies. You got people with guns protecting the people that don't have guns. <laughs> hmm. Okay, Vinny brings up an honest lie. That's what I mean. This whole honesty concept is manipulated to serve other purposes that doesn't apply to. I don't think a law would need to be honest or dishonest. It would just be that, you know, you don't murder someone. There there you go. Where's the details in you murdered someone? It was self-defense. Okay, then we got all, all that detail-y shit that, you know, we look at a we look at a finished product that we weren't involved in. We were told about it, and this is what the, these people say happened, and you go, well, the guy's guilty. Hang him. <laughs> Based on what? <laughs> he weren't there. We weren't taught to ever be where we're at at the moment we're there. We're taught to look at the phone and check your email and call the office, check with the wife, you know. So finally, Jesus Christ, I got a phone too. But somehow I managed to misplace the charger. <laughs> so now I have no contact with the outside world when I'm walking around out in the, in, in the real world. And I like it. I see everybody else grabbing their phone. And I just, oh, I, I have this like inner uh, uppityness about being free of that beast that we call technology. And then I come home and sit on the computer. Okay, So call it hypocritical if you like. But I can turn this fucking thing off anytime I want to. Where if, if I have a phone and I'm out in society, it for some reason it would be a necessity. I'd need that freaking phone. So I want to cut myself free of that completely. See how long it takes me to find my charger so my wife can give me a call, let me know, you know, what time she's going to be on the train so I can take the dog up and meet her. But, uh, outside of that then we've got the skype so we really don't need the phone it's just a i don't know an added convenience for the modern day mind you know because when i grew up we didn't have cell phones we didn't hell some of the people i grew up with didn't have landlines it was uh in the 60s growing up telephones weren't that big you know people used them but i think the 70s brought the telephone on 
I remember needing to use it more the older I got to get a hold of people and make plans and do shit. And the older I get, now the further I want to get away from uh, all that uh, social convention, all these agreed upon uh, legalities, you know, seat belts. Good God, I, I mean, I don't even know where to start, where I disagree in the system that we live in, taking control and, and for our own good, forcing us by law. And if you don't follow, you get fined. If you don't follow enough time, they'll lock you up. I mean, for infractions of a fucking rule that if you don't use it, there's no telling if it helps you or if it doesn't until after the crash. Well, I had paramedic friends tell me many times, sometimes they help and sometimes they're the reason the injury was as bad as it was. If they would have been free of that safety belt, wouldn't have you know, done the damage it did. So it's like anything else. It's the person that's using the thing should use their own uh, intelligence, you know, their own guidelines. But shit, you're not taught to use your own guidelines. You're taught to follow the rules. Go to school, get a job, you know, be a productive member of society. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, Grimner, I was born a poor Jew child in the suburbs of Los Angeles. Yeah, strangely enough. And uh, But as my father's life progressed, his income got better. So, you know. In back in the days when I was born, there was opportunities for people to live a comfortable life without having to work their self to death. Those days ended about 70 or so, 75, somewhere in there. By the time I had hired on to Ford, the, the plans to shut that plant down were way already in the works, and we didn't know it. My mom knew it. My mom had a fucking feeling about it shutting down, and it did. My father fought her all the way. <laughs> So they end up uh, selling it to another company and retooling it. But that was like 3,000 jobs that the neighborhood I grew up, there was a lot of people that worked there. So, you know, as, as I look back on the things that took place, as I mature, I see them in a different light because I've got different opinions about them today. Some people maybe never get an opinion. Hey, dork cakes, how you doing? I just looked at the screen and saw your flashy red name come up and your <laughs> and your hellos. So yeah, today cakes. I'm on a thing about honesty because I really don't think that we're taught to be honest people. For one, I thought I think we're taught the exact opposite of what that what that lifestyle would entail. We're not capable of producing it especially in a collective. I mean, we might be able to do it a personal thing. You know, you get along with your family and your friends and you tell them the truth. And sometimes they're mad at you for a couple of days or whatever, but you told them the truth. You know, that kind of honesty that just goes right to the bone. And then there's the rest of us. <laughs> People don't, they don't treat each other like that. And they use a lot of excuses. Oh, I don't want to hurt your feelings and all this other shit. But when you think about the Rockefeller medicine kills us, the financial system is a debt collection society. Oh, the the state in itself is just a it's a money sucking machine. You know, it it grabs onto your genitals and it latches fucking onto you, right? And then they put this sucker machine in that, and it just sucks all the money right out of your bones till till you can't. Stay stand them anymore but we tolerate it because that's what there is they do it here too i mean i'm not i'm not immune to that but not speaking the language saves me all that political chit chat and bars i don't really want to deal with so i figure if somebody wants to talk to me about something in english that means they're interested in it and if they're not interested in it then they won't <laughs> win win you know, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Well, anyway, it works for me. Let me I'm going to go beg my wife for a, a beverage while I'm... Hold on a second, folks. Okay. Can I get a coffee while I'm on? Sure. The, thank you, dear. And uh, there you go. Just open the door and make your wants known. You know, and as long as you're not stupid about it, I think people get their way when they're kind. 
And then there's other people that want to, I don't know, bully. and I do it too, but I do it. Why do I do it? I do it because it's a giggle. Because I cannot for the world at this point in my life honestly look at government and, and see it in a light of reality outside of everything they do is wrong. It could be done better. <clears throat> so, if there's room for improvement in something as big as government, that means one of two things. Either it's so big it can't ever be done right, <clears throat> which makes it unnecessary. Yeah, the mental. There you go, mental. We know mental pancakes, dork cakes. He, me and mental go back a while, so we've we've chatted about these topics uh that's why you get on here, and it, it gets kind of confusing. It's hard to decide what to talk about because, you know, we're, we're, the dork table in the original, the scheme of it was to get on here and, you know, have a giggle and a laugh, make some, you know, talk some stories. What, what, will you, what do you want from life? What don't you want from life? Not reading uh, links and informing everybody about all the great changes coming because I think the consensus of the, RLM, as far as a general rule would be, there's no news coming. There, nothing is happening that's going to change anything, except for the worse. Nothing has for how many years? Forty. I mean, if you call Obama being elected a success, then you don't know what he did when he was in office for eight years. But you know, me and Vinny and uh, I guess Hans and somebody else, Rob Works, were arguing about cognitive dissonance before the show playing around on the chat and i'm a f i'm sucked into a form of that at some levels of shit i just don't recognize them because i'm in them and government is fortunately not one of them governmental is just a story exactly cakes but it's very difficult for some people i think to get beyond the reality of you can only look around you so far you know, you got a car and all that other horse shit, and that's all wonderful. But if you're just walking or you're just sitting somewhere, your 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 vision's limited. I mean, how how much of this great big fucking planet do you see while you're out having coffee at Starbucks or at the bar having a beer? I don't. I see the people in the room. So, kind of makes my world a lot smaller. Uh Dork Cakes, let me interrupt this for a Dork Cakes review on Rob Works' comment. What did Rob say? Oh, Rob's putting up Vladimir Putin to get elected as Russia's president. <laughs> sure, elected. <laughs> there's there's a reality for it. More shit, you know, for the for the voters. It's like they they give you just enough shit so if you play along that you'll believe what they tell you. You know? And if you don't believe what they tell you, then you there's no reason to play along. So, here we are. And then there's implied consent. Uh, back to the honesty part, right? <clears throat> yeah, we're all dead. Oh, soon you are all dead. Dork Cakes is being negative. <laughs> nah, stating the obvious. Dorks, what can I tell you? I have friends in very strange places. But, let's see here honesty 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 i'm trying to think of an example that i could put forward that would okay here here's something that's really interesting to me very important and it might get i don't know a quarter of a million people might look at a link if one is posted and it's about the uh, the act of 1871 that made it possible for the federal reserve bank to squeak back into america and take over and here we are. We have a Federal Reserve Bank. We have all the information about the truth of how it became, what it's done, how it's worked for over 100 years now. And yet, there's no resistance to it. What would we replace it with? And people have answers to these questions that are in finance. They're, they post them all the time. I'm not here to repeat those answers. You want that shit, go look for it. But if you play that game... Uh, why would you want to play if you're in such fear of the, of the, what would you call it? The power that exists in your life. I mean, 
I don't I don't think me and Cirque live in any under any different legal definition. You know, the legal definition. You don't pay your bills, then eventually you're gonna lose what you own. Okay, that's that's that status, you know, shit that we all live under. And they call it democracy and they call it this and that and it's just just the uh, what is it? What do, I call it tyranny. Tyranny, tyranny. People forcing me to do things against my will. If I don't really want to do it, you know. So, if you have no choice, if you don't do it, you're being you're being forced. And, and society seems to pretend like there's there's some kind of uh, secret opt out to this crap, you know. Oh, if you don't break the law, then the police won't bother you. Well, what about when you know you yeah had a broken tail light or something somebody bumped into your car in a parking lot you didn't know it and they cracked your tail light so then the cop sees that and pulls you over because you got a cracked tail light and i'll tell you why i bring this up my buddy jen in uh, north carolina we're having a couple drinks one day at the bar and i just out of nowhere i looked up at her and i said you know what you're going to get pulled over by the damn law for a broken tail light you know, you're going to be drinking, so pay attention to your drinking and, and driving shit. A couple of weeks go by. I get a phone call on my phone at the bar, and it's Jen. She says, you bastard, how did you know? I just got pulled over, and the cop says, I got a broken tail light and I had a couple of drinks. Well, anyway, she, she, you know, she was a good-looking girl, blah, blah, blah. She got away with the drinking and pulled it off, got the ticket for the tail light. But the next time I saw her, she says, oh. Do me a favor and don't ever tell me the things you think are going to happen to me again. <laughs> so, honesty. See, this this is where honesty can take people. So, there's two sides to this honesty. It's not all. It's not all what it's supposed to be, and I think because of the food and the electricity that we live on, makes the things that we hear different. It makes makes the way that we react to stuff different so we're more compliant you know just like me i'm more compliant because fighting this fucking dragon is uh man that's pointless you're just going to get your ass kicked the admiral court doesn't care who you are engage that court and you're going to be fucking screwed somewhere they'll get you eventually they got lots of money to play with so it takes such an incredible amount of money to properly fight this uh, legal system that's developed over the years that what what are you going to do or the police <laughs> the police have tanks oh fuck me i saw it with my own eyes well um i haven't i didn't see it when i was in the states but i've seen it on film of the states so i would assume those look like the american city streets i was looking at some of them were familiar and i saw incredible things i saw the uh, united nations doing a drill in both la and tampa back on uh the internet when i first jumped on the internet about 2011 or 12 somewhere in there and at the time it was just knocking me making me nuts going wait a minute the united nations is doing drills in in la what the fuck is going on and the people are okay with this shit no resistance here we are all these years later still in I, and I was writing earlier. I can, uh, I can, I hear off in the distance. I can hear the chains tightening. And Vinny is saying to, unto me, "Oh, he's saying something about Joe Dirt." And it flashes that goes along with that vid you shared. Death by thoughts. Death by thoughts. Hmm. Oh, the that twenty-minute video that I posted. It's called the candidate, I think. And what that, that was another one. It's this is another interesting point of of honesty there's a um, I should post it on, on here it's a 20 minute film it's called The Candidate I found it on YouTube odd, oddly enough and I got a lot of good stuff off YouTube so I'm kind of sorry that it, it, YouTube's turned into what it's become over the years but maybe that was the plan like everything else all along it was going to be that sooner or later but I don't know I can only assume things based on what I know and I don't know a whole lot. I've mentioned that. I've got a lot of opinions about shit. And I think stuff. But what do I actually know? Hmm. 
I don't know. Very confused. Especially, um, did he push nut? Uh-oh. No, I didn't push another button. What's going on here? No, nah, that's you. I'm staying clear of my red button. Radio check. Chuck, chuck, chuck. Oh, maybe it's because I opened something I shouldn't have opened. But, oh, it's you. <laughs> Good one. You got me. But, uh, yeah, this 20 minutes. So here's this thing. If, if I tell you what it's about, it kind of ruins the, the point. But it's about a candidate. And the, the candidate of this uh, secret society. And he's being, uh, he's under the impression that he's being asked to join this group. Oops, and I post a song instead. I did it wrong. The candidate. There we go. I'll do it right this next time. But, th so the, the man, whoops, he thinks he's being uh, chosen to do something that he wants to do. <laughs> and then, of course, well, reality is reality. But let me see, Vinny, is this the one you're talking about? The candidate. Anyway. <clears throat> so I got on this... Um, <laughs> cake make me a cup two cakes that sounds good yeah i know i've got my little thing i'm looking to make sure i don't make it turn red with pushing around buttons and shit but uh yeah the candidate thing turned out that i found a few really interesting movies on on the youtube over the years but honest honest on what defines an honest person you know to a individual how do you judge an honest person? And if if they're living the life we're living, how could they possibly be honest when they're not capable of it because the shit you're eating and drinking, if that's not even honest, then where's yours? You know, it's a nice illusion, but to me, I don't I don't see it any uh, I don't see it working out too good. I see a lot of people getting conned into thinking. Uh, they are your enemy, you know, and every time I go down to the train station and I do business with my friend down there that's from Persia, which is Iran, we exchange our, you know, uh, deal and say hey and goodbye, goodbye and that's that. No, there's no bombs falling, No, nobody's threatening anyone, but they're the typical Arab Jew in the same room and yeah, great Vinny and uh. So, when when I was in Copenhagen, there was one uh, vendor in town that didn't like me, so I just avoided his store, and that was n not a big problem. You know, if somebody doesn't want to be around you, then don't go visit them. It's really easy to do, but I don't know. We've been taught shit that uh, it seems wrong to me now to be. Uh, all that stand your ground and all that hold your fort and you know protect your walls and I, if you don't live in an environment that doesn't require that in the first place then there's really nothing to defend but having the knowledge i mean christ i think we've all had that beaten into us by some adult somewhere verbally mentally you know to defend yourself that that comes easy especially in american society where if you don't, people just walk the fuck all over you. That's just the way it's always been. Nothing new in that race whatsoever. But um, where I'm at, I'd have to really do something uh, physical and outlandish to upset anyone. You know, so simple. And that's just how everybody here is, no matter what country they're from. We get people from um, Sweden, you know, the local countries sometimes they move here or they they're visiting somebody so it, it's not like a like it's isolated from the rest of the world if anything it's it it knows to, you know it knows the uh, people passing through and coming around and that change won't come here for <laughs> not without local approval you know they might change a bus station and put a parking lot in it, but that's not the kind of change that's going to shift the community here. These people are they are tied together somehow. It's very very difficult for me to explain because I didn't grow up with it. But I can look at it and the the children act differently. You know, well, 
I see kids going to the grocery store by themselves without, you know, without a tank to protect them. But not in America. Christ, you leave your kid alone and who knows what could happen. And, and even in sets of two or more. And today I was having a beer down, in, down at the bar and there's a whole half a dozen kids, bikes, carrying on in the street being teenagers. And nobody was telling them to shut up or call the police because they're being a bother. They were just loud kids having fun in the street. And it didn't seem to, uh, doesn't bother anyone here. They're not, they're not edgy like that about simple growing up things. And the one thing I haven't seen, though, is in any act of violence. So I'm still pulling a, a thousand on that one. We've gone, uh, since I left Scotland, I haven't seen anybody get punched, shot, kicked, booted, stabbed, nothing. It's been very dull. Hmm. Of course, lucky me, you know. I guess I pulled the lucky straw on that one. But anyway, so I'm back to this honesty. You know, Trump and Obama, I wonder if they are being honest. What, you know, like Mary says, do these people at some level of this crap that they tell us, do they believe it at all? Or are they reading, you know, what are they doing? Are they just doing a job reading a piece of paper? Okay, today's my job, and I got to read this piece of paper and tell these people this shit. Or do they really believe the shit that they tell us? Because we've been talked into global warming. Uh, we've been talked into 37 genders. Uh, in some places in America, they've got problems with this uh, gender identity shit where you don't have a go Goyle's room and a little Boyle's room now. Now you can identify as the, uh, hey, I like her. I think I identify as a girl. I think I'll wait till she goes to the bathroom and have to go to. And, uh, you know, but I'm a girl. So it's going to be okay. And that's what they're doing to people right now in the school system it's a sweet game i heard somebody talking about it too so mm. it's not just me making up a good joke on the dork table let's see what vincenzo's got up his sleeves now uh i don't usually do that though mm. a man is judged by the quality of his enemies quotes huh interesting and i i did recommend that you should you guys should make a Printable copy <laughs> on veil, you know, available like on a page where all the quotes are. Because today somebody was looking for quotes and couldn't find the one they were looking for. But maybe that was me. I don't. Maybe I. I don't know how to search them out specifically. But still think there should be some way to just dig them up, like in a whole group, so you can see them all. The great brilliance of the RLM chat rumors over the time that we've been here. Some people write some really good shit. Hmm. Oh, he's thanking Dork Cakes is thanking S Snagged RW Thank Mon. Good article will share Dork Cakes. Oh, look at that. And I get to read that on the radio because I know Dork Cakes and I know Rob and I don't, people have their opinions about shit. You know, we either uh, rebel against their opinion or we're drawn to their opinion. Sometimes Rob goes a little too far, in my opinion, but the basics of it, you know, because I don't, I don't, uh, I don't appreciate uh, people trying to put an insult on me through physical, you know, like, oh, you pothead. Okay, well, yeah, I'm a pothead. What has that got to do with anything? As though because you smoke pot, that knocks you down the chart some, you know. You're all of a sudden, you're not as qualified as the next fella because you indulge in the marijuana. Mm. Hey, quote flash. Anyway, but uh, here we go. I don't know who wrote this one. But history is hard to know because of all the hired bullshit. But even without being sure of history, it seems entirely reasonable to think that every now and then the energy of a whole generation comes to a head in a long, fine flash for reasons that nobody really understands at the time and which never explain, in retrospect, what actually happened. 
Hunter S. Thompson. Well, he's kind of tricky with his words, and you know, I I would just take that as shit changes and nobody knows why, and there will be a hundred explanations and they'll all make sense. No, the monkeys don't know anything either, anti. But hey, what the fuck? And anti doesn't get the the dork table, so he doesn't even know I said anything to him. Ha 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 ha! I'm so sneaky. Mm. So. Honesty in uh, what, where is honesty based at? I mean, there's no foundation for it. It's like a, it's like a, a catch-all phrase. It, it, it means something, but it depends. You know, it depends on how much money you got. It depends on if your lawyer knows how to get you out of this shit. It depends on this. It depends on that. Mm -hmm. Well, if honesty is so liquid... Then how do they get away with writing flu? You know, a law that's based in stone. You know, so either honesty isn't as fluid as it's presented to be. You know, well, it depends on the details of the this and the that and the other thing. And I think it all depends on the person that grows up to be a pain in the ass in society was raised as a child to grow up. To be a pain in the ass in society. That was the, the plan all along. Only, the thing has been disguised by education because the government forces us to put our kids in their hands. And if you don't, <laughs> they'll deal with you. <laughs> they'll deal with you a lot. And they got lots of money to deal with you with. So again, it's not about the money. It's about the control. Okay, that... That particular word never goes anywhere, but again, it's based on honesty. People that are honest don't seem, in my opinion, the people I live among who I consider honest have absolutely no desire to control me. They expect me to do that. That's my fucking job, you know? They don't sit around with signs, don't steal, don't kill, don't rape, don't pillage, don't plunder. They just sit around, you know, and it's for me, the individual, to decide what I'm going to spend my fucking time doing amongst my peers. So it's not a real big decision to make. I'm going to get along with people and do what I do, whatever that may be. Based in stone. Well, etched in stone, you know. Grim, they write shit down and they think because, well, look, it was written down. Well, yeah, well, you can write a lie down too. Does that make that fucking thing true? It's true if uh, 65 million people believe it, then it, your lie is no longer a lie. That's what I'm saying about honesty. We're deceived in so many ways by so much of what's around us that how can we ourselves make an honest assessment of what the fuck this shit is? You're going to be blinded by something. Something's going to get your attention. My th I love the internet. The internet's been wonderful to me. I learned a lot of things. It it supported my uh, instincts. My What I believed was true turned out to be true by reading the internet. But, on the other hand, if I had pursued it from the other side and said, Hey, I need my doctor. Oh, Lord, what's going to happen? I could have found information on the internet that would have bound the cord tighter around me from medicine. So I've also grown to believe that the information you receive on the Internet is d kind of designed. You're, as the time goes on, the more time you spend on it, the more information you're going to get is just related to what you've shown an interest in. It's not going to open up new doors. New Opening a new door is a random act of just guts. You just do it. And if you need a reason to uh, explore, then stay home, like I do. Hey, fires up the bubbler. How nice Mr. Rob works. I'm thinking I'm going to find my little thing here and join you, sir. Wait, my, the wife has coffee brewing because I get dry talking to myself on the RL&M <laughs> dork table program. <laughs> but... <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, think about this. Here, here we go with honesty, right? I grew up in L.A. And if you 
know anything about history, seriously know about history, then you know that if you were born in L.A. in 1959, a hundred years before that or so, that was in L.A. That was Juan Valdez's backyard that he lived in because that was Mexican territory. But, see, now we, we've got this world where the conquerors, the physical conquering of, of lands was done in one fashion. And as times change, the descriptions changed. You know, the reasons for doing the destructions changed. But the land grabs didn't change. They just call them something different. You know, stolen land. Christ, I guess I grew up on it. Indian reservation or some well, not reservation but Indian land at one time if it wasn't any land it was Mexican land it belonged to somebody else is my point so that's why I have the stand on on ownership that I've got is no matter where you are probably even where I'm living today in Denmark somebody probably stole this land from somebody else at some point in history who knows I mean we've just got maps and politicians and educators to follow so we're and oh the religious so we're pretty screwed on getting the truth about what was before us i mean christ they talked a whole generation into believing that hemp was bad and cannabis made the niggers and the mexicans rape all the white girls so we got to outlaw it <laughs> so so here we are in society a hundred years behind because we've been burning oil like a bunch of chimpanzees and you can't convince anybody it's the wrong thing to do. Oh, no, the world depends on it. Oh, the trade and all. Yeah, that's the problem. Cut all that shit the fuck out and stop doing it. And the world goes to the state it's supposed to be and it's not supposed to be globally connected. Now, because we have the stuff is one thing. And to use the stuff is one thing. But you don't have to we're, we're doing these things whether it's through the implied consent or the blackmail consent because to live in 2018 without electricity would probably be to most most normal average regular whatever the word is people barbaric but you know there's people living in the streets i've seen that on tent cities and shit in the states now that was a wow boy <clears throat> honesty You've got more empty houses than you have homeless people because the bankers fraudulently figured out a way to steal all that land, all those homes from the public and take over and throw people out in the street. And here we are. We know it was all a fraud. We know it was all uh, them against us, so to speak. <clears throat> but they win every fucking time. I don't know how they do it. So, uh, oh, I know. If you don't have enough money, well, that I think not having enough money, that too is a choice. There's an abundance of fucking money. There's an abundance of ways to acquire money. The thing I don't like is that the government's always got their fucking hand out. <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me. Wanting their share of my hard work by God and country. That's not right. And they go, well, yeah, but it, you know, it pays for shit. And I try to tell people, no, it doesn't. The That tax money hasn't paid anything in so long except for the interest rate on the tax money. You know, the, the Federal Reserve notes that you're not getting anything for a reason. <laughs> they're living on credit. That it's, it's simple. You know, it's not that there isn't anything. It's that there isn't anything with a value attached to it. That part of the whole thing is just a big scam. And we collectively agree with it. I do it every day, blah, blah, blah. How do you get out of it? I don't know. I can't honestly say I know how. Well, I do, but nobody likes it. <laughs> I'll say it again so I can drive you all nuts. Thank you. I got my elixir. I am the happiest guy. So, um, hmm. Hold on, let me take a sip of this delicious elixir. Mm. Ah, I'm sharing a drink with you folks, just in case you didn't know. Ah, I feel better now. So, uh, I was doing the old 422 when the wife walked in. I was just getting ready to do the lighting of the torch thing. 
And yeah, now on Liberty Media. And this time, uh, it's... Okay, I got an hour and 11, 10 minutes to go. So I won't overextend myself. Wow, that was fun, though. I had a good time. Am I muted again? No. Oh, she, oh, she's got the game muted, but she's listening to me. Wow. Play by play. And the guy in the thing grabbed the guy without the thing and drug him down and stepped on his face. Ha, 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 ha. I don't know. I, I didn't really. Uh, I was a swimmer as a as a sport and you know, that was what i got put into and what i was good at competitive swimming but team sports were um the relay part of it i could do that because you know, they had that was kind of a, a team effort you had four swimmers and everybody had a different stroke and you had to know you know there was rules you can't just jump in you had to wait for the guy to hit the wall and blah 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 but football i was too small too bad i'd have been a mean little you know small guy you know, biting angles and shit but nah it wasn't my thing baseball nah basketball nah but swimming hmm. and i was always alone you know if you contacted me in a swim pool you are probably gonna you know have a problem about it because it wasn't normal every once in a while maybe somebody that was new swimming would swim into you or something but so rarely that if it ever did happen, anger wasn't the first thing. You just think, oh, wait, we got a new swimmer. Let's see what's going on here. And, uh, wow. The first time I, I, I still remember my first swim meet. I didn't know what it was exactly yet. You know, they had me do it, but I, I dove in the wrong lane. I uh, wasn't clear on, on what was, I was six years old or something, just having good time swimming. <laughs> anyway, but. It took them a little bit of time, but after a couple of more meets, I learned what the rules were and turned out to be what was for me. All this other stuff. Wow. It's, it's too, um, I think it, what it boils down to is all the gambling behind it kind of pushed me out of it. I was living in San Francisco when the 49ers, and they won like three Super Bowls in a row. They couldn't lose, but I lived in the city, so I couldn't get anybody that would bet against them. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah you know not gonna happen so mm, football honesty i don't think people are capable anymore of being honest at a level that matters you know because everything else behind us not because of us so much as our upbringing you know the indoctrinations probably going to take all this in a, in a way that i mean it but I don't mean it exactly how I guess it sounds. Hmm. I'll have to listen back to this one because um, I was pondering it on the way home from the grocery for a while. And I didn't talk to anybody else about this. So really, I don't, I'm not comparing mine to anybody else's. I'm just putting out like standard questions about if we're an honest living people... Why do we have the results that we have, <clears throat> for example, in politics? If that wasn't based on a <clears throat> a bunch of lying, stealing, thieving opportunists trying to stay above everybody else, what are they doing? And why do they go out there poor and come out of it rich? And why do they stay so long? I mean, crying out loud, what, two years, four years, this should be enough, and you make the seat open for somebody else to come in. Because it's not about change and it's not about improving anything. The crap they feed us that's changing is a bunch of nonsense that probably I don't know anybody personally that most of that shit affects physically. You know, like uh, all this cross gender shit with bathrooms and I don't know, I define my, I'm a toaster, all that. I haven't seen any of that. I live in a quieter place. I guess I'd have to go home for that. I've heard a lot about it, but I haven't fit. See, I'm living so isolated from uh, whatever reality has turned into in the last 10 years. Passed me right up. I'm alone, all by myself. <laughs> it's like everybody else. I wish we could get past all that and just accept, you know, like, I'm alone except for Cirque. But that's Cirque's decision, not, not my decision. That. It's what she decided. And 
just I decided it back. Of course, anybody can change their mind any time, but that doesn't seem to happen. And I think that's based on honesty, because the truth is, uh, I'm more comfortable with her than I am without her. So hmm. that's the what dictates things, you know, whatever's best for everybody, send, that's the best way to go. But I didn't learn that in that honest upbringing that I grew up in. What I grew, learned was to compete and to win and pretty much do whatever you had to do to win outside of cheating, you know, work harder, practice more, study better, whatever. My dad was straight up. He wasn't a crook, but it was still the same, um, the same results, you know, and you get to some point of uh, success where you're either satisfied or you want more. And I found a successful point early, so I never had to. I never had to go all the way to find out what I was willing to do to make money. <laughs> you know, some people will find very interesting ways to. Um, what do you call it? Make a living. <laughs> politics would have been priceless i wish i'd to this day well i have a, a, a moment where i wish i would have had the the dishonesty thing alive in me at the point where i wanted to do that and, and screw people over and fuck them up and make money but i didn't so yeah i wished out i'm not even i'm now i'm not even a i'm not even an american anymore <laughs> whatever the hell that is hmm Oh, uh, now they're talking in the RLM chat about the autonomous cop car is a mobile courthouse. Holy fuck, are you out of your minds? Admiralty Court on wheels, it can come to you? No, 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 don't do that. You guys are crazy enough without that, please. You guys start drawing the line somewhere. If, if this government takes anything else away from the, the collective... I mean, crying out loud, you're going to have to eat each other because there's not going to be anything left. And the way it looks to me, like the Kavanaugh thing, I know I don't usually go on about politics, but I'm going to take a stand here. He had uh, a big hand in, in the Patriot Act. And other people are talking about that. And their opinion, from what I'm getting from them, is, well, the, the Patriot Act was obviously written well before 9-11 happened. And this guy they want to put on the SCOTUS helped write that. <laughs> so you're not getting what you're being promised. Every fucking time it always happens. So just watch. What's SCOTUS going to do? They're going to rule that uh, you're all slaves and the state needs to hunker down and take care of you. I mean, it's not good. To, to let nine relics rule you is whew, wow. I don't know. I don't know how many relics are ruling me here. So I probably shouldn't say anything. <laughs> but I will say the politics that I've seen in Denmark's a little bit more open. There's less secrecy and privacy. More people are watching and they're accountable. They're way more accountable here than than most of the people that come come from the states. And how I mean that is this fed is in They've infected us like a fucking bug, right? There's not a lot of them. There's like two or three million federal agents or whatever. And uh, 300 million people. So I think the people got the Fed outnumbered quite a bit. But the people don't know that. The people have been convinced over time that the state trumps Fed. And the reality of it, or that the Fed trumps state, and the reality is the state trumps Fed. Maybe they've rewritten things since those days. Again, that's how do you play a game like that? Where this is good for everybody, but then uh, 20 minutes later, it's not, you know, 20 minutes, 20 years later, hey, wait a minute, we're going to change all that and we're going to do it a different way. And the public doesn't seem to care which way it goes. If it's against the law, they're all right. If it's a, if it's legal, it's all right. They lack the uh, the wherewithal of seeing the the judge, the control that goes with legal or illegal. 
some things don't require that kind of attention. Again, honesty. We are not taught these things. We're taught, pot makes you do this and horrible things. And it turns out, like always, a bunch of crap. Everything you do using it is better than if you didn't use it. Your health is improved depending on how you use it. <laughs> Please. But I can go to a couple of different places downtown and go to have a beer or a shot or 10 shots or, you know, however many, whatever's acceptable before they tell you to get a cab and, and you know, go throw up on your wife and leave us alone. <laughs> but that's acceptable. See, that's my my problem with the world that I live in is they're all convinced of all the wrong shit. Yeah. And trying to unteach them is futile you, i've made many many uh not enemies but what would you call it people that disagree with me strongly on the interwebs because their version of life is different than mine but they don't seem to be willing to hold their self responsible for little minor things like well, I don't know, kicking all the Palestinians out of their country and taking it away and giving it to a group of people that don't belong there. But the religious have got them convinced this is what it's about. And what I think happened was a group of fucking creeps, these creeps, got a hold of this Jew idea and borrowed it. And here we are, because... If the religions are anything but evil, then we wouldn't be living in a world where all the religions are the ones doing all the worst of the shit. You know, Catholics and Christians and what else is there? Muslims, Jews. Oh, the Jews. Lucky me. But the funny part about the Jews thing, right? That's all based on commerce, too. You know, I think the Jews made some kind of deal with the Catholics and. And here we are, all these, you know, 2,000, whatever years down the road, 5,000, whoever knows. It's all just shit on paper to me. But here we are down the road, still doing things that are obviously do not work in our best interests in ways that are damaging, fucking sometimes fatal. Depends on how far you'll take the medical system and the monetary system. I mean, crying out loud, they can come and take your fucking property from you and shoot you the cops they do it now once upon a time people would stand against the bad guy and now the bad guy's turning out to be the authority that we live under wow and it's not like you can't say they they were warned they've you know you've been told everybody that can hear my voice jeez you guys all know but the people that don't want to hear my voice, the ones that really should, the ones that need to know, you can't show them. I don't think they're equipped mentally. There's something in their uh, indoctrination, their upbringing, what, however their, their learning process was molded. They've been taught to accept this and reject that. And I don't see how that's thinking. That's, being, that's answering a question. You know, like taking a test at school, how can that be learning anything if all you're doing is tell them what they said? Any, you know, I looked at that like, well, any idiot can do that. But then I was told, wow, you shouldn't be so smart, smart about it. You know, wow. I was being smart because I thought they weren't even requiring a whole lot in the first place. Didn't seem like much. And I was, I was really young when I said that. So, uh, but as time went by, I lost my interest in academia. Jeez, by 10, I was finished with that shit. And, but the system, see, this is what I mean about how they, they do everything wrong. If they would have got me earlier than 13, I might have um, done what they wanted. But they waited way too long to try to control me into it. And uh, all these, I don't know, studies and books and opinions and doctors and all this horse shit. Half of them just make shit up. There are no studies. Where, you know, where are the studies that the mayor of New York did in the 19, I think it was the 1930s. Got to look up 
which mayor it was. But he did a study on marijuana's effect on people of should they smoke it. And his report came back as doing no harm to the general public. And the government, federal government, trashed it and said we ain't using that and buried it. But apparently the information still exists because I saw it. But my memory won't serve me and I can't think of the governor's name. But So I'll pin it down to the years where it would be applicable. And it should be right about the 1930s. So there you go with that. And I'm not the greatest legal fucking mind. I don't even believe in half of this shit. But some of the stuff that's been done to me through the law, I've paid attention to that because I don't want to be a victim running around crying like some little bitch about what the state's doing to me. So I've separated myself from it in more ways than just not living in it. I think that uh, hmm, it's hard to explain. I just don't. I don't take it seriously. It's just an illusion. I'm just on my way to go get the food at the store and have a beer. There's no big life-changing extravagance happening. Well, except for the, maybe the life itself. But, <laughs> boy, we're taught to play that part down. <laughs> we don't get taught in nothing. I remember um, very little of what specifically I was taught and to date, you know, Oh, Mr. Vincent is doing the green. The devil's lettuce will make your lungs black, mister. And I think I'm, what, so I've got the delay. So you guys are behind me. I, or, yeah, you type and you'll hear what I say about a minute later. That's kind of cool. I'm getting used to it. <clears throat> but still, I've got all these questions to myself about a word and the way it's been represented to me for 50 odd years of my life, you know, it wasn't for a while that honesty came up in life. I think it started at school, but nobody ever made a point of it. <clears throat> Maybe they should have. Oh, Mr. Vincent. Oh, yeah, he's got a birthday coming up. I'll drop that one for you there, Mr. Vincent, after you type it out. I'm being stated. Eh, probably. You know, I just, um, it's not willing participation, you know. It's compliance because uh, of circ. That's as much as I'm willing to do. And it's enough. It keeps everybody happy. So, But I still got that um, being told what to do thing about me, you know. But... See, it works out for my good because this is where she wants to be anyway. So all I can do is either help make things more comfortable or be a prick and work against the grain and make it more more uncomfortable. And I think I do a pretty good ter um, job of discerning when it's time to stand, you know, stand up and be counted. And the rest of the time is nobody gives a flying fuck anywhere. Just agree but the results aren't as devastating as they used to be like i've not given up my privileges to walk around you know oh okay you hear what i say and then i read the text later okay i get it now i must be dyslexic or something i i have problems with that not left and right or you know easy things but memory or see that's my upbringing and the way i was taught to uh, in, in, interpret life it had to be unique because there's so few people that that think the way I think in the first place oh yeah Vinny hey sure everybody you know when you have a birthday I don't you know I never would never hold the birthday against anybody not Hansel no one I mean that's that's the day you're born it's got to mean something to you or you wouldn't say it you know you wouldn't mention it to anyone so, fuck yeah, have a good time, and have a good time when it ain't your birthday. Have a good time on my birthday, it's cool. But, uh, I'm being stated. Yeah, there's no way, see, Grimner, there's no way to physically uh, be comfortable in, in the present day life, you know, living comfortably with all the modern conveniences and not have the state up your ass somehow or another. They're going to be there because they control all the necessities. Without the state, you can't can't function. 
unless you can grow your own food and you got a well, you 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 got to be compliant. Hmm. Oh, that elixir is good. Thank you, sweetheart. Anyway, you know, and these are my opinions, by the way, folks. I mean, I've never assumed I speak for the group at any time for any reason. Hell, half the time I'm arguing with the person I'm on the radio with. And I've had a few people on the radio that I really appreciated um, the opportunity to talk to them. Because sometimes, you know, you, like I've heard other people do their own shows. And then I spoke to them. And they treated me, I don't know, like it was comfortable. It wasn't like I was listening to them. It was like they're actually talking to me. Ah, there you go. Vinny's all excited about his birthday. Hell yeah, and you should be. Why not? I was surprised to get this many. I have no idea how I did it, so don't ask for any tips. <laughs> but, and I'm serious about the English. They have a company called um, Labbrokes. And you can go on there. They're, they bet on Trump's presidency, for crying out loud. The English will vote on two butterflies, you know, uh, in a race. The, these people will gamble on any ex, anything, sunrise, sunset. First born on at this day is going to be male or female. <laughs> so uh, I'll bet there's still if they haven't done the vote. I don't think they voted on the SCOTUS yet. There's probably odds on on whether he'll get there or not. And which proves to me one more time. That all this illusion about SCOTUS and POTUS and FRODUS, it's, it's a bunch of nonsense. Because you know what? I'm looking around my living room now and I don't see no SCOTUS. Don't see no orange-haired people telling me what to do. So, hmm, I'm going to resist and do exactly what I'm doing, just like I always have. And it works. It's a state of mind, people. Good Lord. If you have an honest state of mind... What I found out from my own experience is you don't seem to draw any more crap. And I remember the last time I got nailed by the police for uh, walking across the street when it pissed them off is what the charge was. I was living in the valley in San Fernando in an apartment building off of Sepulveda Boulevard. And had a lot of traffic and big store across the street from where I lived so I would go get my necessary provisions. And at the time, I didn't have a vehicle to drive, so I walked. And I was coming back from the grocery store, getting my necessary provisions. And these two undercover cops decided to harass me. I was like, what the fuck is all this shit? And after they were done talking to me, and I was, what what they were, compl what they're bothering me for was, I was in a, a area of town that was known for drugs. Okay, <laughs> go into the grocery store. I got the grocery bag and the grocery stuff in the bag, but I'm out shopping for drugs in the middle of the afternoon. So well, I just figured I was a new face. I, I just fit the fit the deal, and the guys wanted to see if I was holding. And instead of being honest and just asking me, let me you know, search me, whatever they got to do, they went through all that bullshit instead. And at that time. I was like, I've had enough of these fucking cops. What the hell is it about? What am I doing that's drawing this shit to me? I don't want it anymore. I'm fucking done. And I haven't been stopped except for TSA ever since. So, either I believe the weirdest shit that's possibly, pot there is to believe that's possible, or it's true. There's not a lot of choices. People think everything's fucking infinite. Infinite everything. Because you can cook a taco in 12 seconds doesn't mean there's instant everything. <laughs> you know, Man cannot live on tacos alone. Well, maybe you could. Nah, you, you'd need something else. Tacos forever. Ah, I don't want to live. Now see, that's honest. And I'm even Mexican enough to say, <laughs> I could eat that shit forever. You know Let's get revenge. How about that? That's what life seems to be uh, all about right today. It's not about fixing shit or repairing anything or 
making anything correct. It's about let's get revenge and win and be the winner. Well, what? Who are who are you fighting? And and all this SCOTUS shit. They split the United States, the people, in two groups, and then they stand back and throw another couple of guys in there and then watch you guys fight like dogs. And that's acceptable. Wow. Well, I don't see why you just don't put the leaders in a fucking box and let them fight it out, and we don't have to. <laughs> you know? Put Trump and Putin in a cage, and whoever walks out, they won. It's all theirs. They can tell him everything. See? Dictatorship. Just like we got right now, only they don't call it that. Because you have a new SCOTUS, you lucky fuckers. And this SCOTUS, now, <laughs> here's the ridiculous part. That's why I was saying earlier. Instead of teaching people the... Uh, the good side of life, so to speak, you know, they don't. They got the results they were looking for by the way they raised this through the education system. To have this problem of women, or women, kids getting fucking pregnant in the first place. And then, not only that, but an abortion is an answer to it. Well, no, it's all wrong, see. But let's not get into that. I don't want any taco. That has been 12 seconds. <laughs> don't go to Taco Bell. <laughs> taco Bell might have that. But I don't know. We're, I've got my illusion, and I'm sure you've got yours. Some people's illusion is it's real strong and real dependent on fucking other people over. With their illusion, they want other people to be fucked. And... I say leave them alone. No, I think if you left us all alone, the ones that would fuck up would probably not because somebody was paying attention to them. <laughs> so living a good life is really a um, it's it's a it's a low level attention thing. Nobody notices that you're nice and you're a good person. Are you insane? That's what you're supposed to fucking be. That's average, okay? Nah, but hey, we noticed the prick that comes in shooting. <laughs> and he don't have a lot of friends because he keeps killing them. <laughs> yeah, well, there won't be enough Silent Green for everybody. So, you know, get your guns and arm up because the food lines are going to stop. They're going to cut the food lines and watch you all massacre each other. I mean, crying out loud, they've threatened it. Remember the BET cards when they shut that down for like what, what, 72 hours or something? I said it was a glitch. <laughs> glitch. A banking glitch. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Yeah. Turn, I think you turn the internet on and off when you want to. Glitch. You, you want a glitch, there's a glitch. Any excuse will do. You know, if you told the truth, it wouldn't have been a glitch. It would have been, we're testing this to see what the society will do if we stop paying these people for a day and a half. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> All right, here we go with the Second Amendment. Who gives a fuck? Where's your damn constitution? Do you understand what the Patriot Act is? please. You have no constitution. And then, if you go to court, that even double proves you got no constitution because that fucking thing was hijacked by the Admiralty Court. And what it costs to get past that nightmare, we ain't got. Collectively, we don't have it. It's an arm and a leg of lawyers playing their game for fucking years to keep you out of jail for words. Because this group of families in Europe and Asia and other places have convinced the rest of the world that they deserve to own everything and here are these idiots fucking supporting that willingly not not hostage held they they vote they get out there and they go mr trump will you please insert your penis into my butthole it is empty and i need it to be filled and the rest of us see it that way but the guy that does it doesn't know how do you tell them without making it stupid like I just did? 
how do you how do you ever get it to a person that's been raised with this i have a right to fuck you because i'm from a certain bit of dirt because i'm from that cer certain bit of dirt and that's how i see the behavior now is wow you can't stay in your own fucking place you got to come over here and fuck with me <laughs> so it's made my um, made my existence so much easier to know that that side of life exists if i had been one of those i might be over here getting in fucking fights with people about being on the right side of the muslims or shit like that that's made up in the first place or the jew crying out loud i don't know how many times i've harped about how many people even understand you can't hold a public office in america if you don't um, sign on to apac first you got to praise the jew you don't support the jew they don't give you money you don't run it's that simple it's we're we have our whole political system being held hostage by eight million fucking jews and nobody will go hey the jews are fucking us no, they, hey, put it a little deeper there, Mr. Trump. Oh, it's starting to feel good. Uh, and I'm personally fucking see. I saw Trump sucking on that fucking wall. Fucking traitor. I mean, my people will kill you. They don't, they don't have a fucking concern about who you are. They'll kill their own. It's not... It's not the people that met. It's the ideas behind this shit. So there's no... no That's why I laugh at this. There cannot be any fucking real Jews left in this fucking game because what's going on is against everything they were supposed to be for. So you explain all that. All these religions are just a bunch of psychos with um, pointy hats and whatever swords or <laughs> some implement of incantation, you know, to impress the crowds with their gift that they speak to the Holy One with. And, you know, here we are in 2018. You got instant every fucking thing and you still believe in the Holy fucking thing. There's a Holy somewhere. It's probably in your skull. There's, I mean, sorry, Vince, and I, I know you believe that stuff. I'm picking on the big organized the, the ones that do the outright fucking harm. Not the person that... But the people that support it. But them too. But not so much that because their lack of knowledge. They've not been raised to see that side of the puzzle. They, they can't look at it. While their fucking priests get paid off... You know, pay off... Uh, sexual blah 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 lawsuits and shit. I mean, what does it take... People do not seem to follow the the, the problem is not in a, uh, it's not more, any more complicated than we're overpopulated in specific areas to get these results, you know, and these results don't happen in a small place unless everybody's good with it. That's the way I understand. Maybe I'm wrong. What? Oh, that's a grimner. Poor Hansel. I. I feel sorry for Hansel, that poor man, because it, what it would take for Hans to understand what I understand about the society that I rolled out of is how easily it is to lose your freedom in a blink of a fucking eye. Snap. All of a sudden, there's these guys taking you away, taking all you're driving your shit away, your car, everything's gone, you're going to jail, and then when it's all over said and over that well they did it that wasn't okay what they did but they did it first before you know, see we get punished before them i hope that poor dread does not have to find out what it's like to be treated like a piece of shit by law but maybe his day will come it could happen to anybody i've known lots of people i've seen the police mistreat and abuse old women I mean, for fuck's sake, if that's the society that you want, well, good. I hope it's uh, I hope it's everything you want, because I don't want it. But the dummy thing, oh, I call him adult because he's so stuck on status. Good Lord. Ah, uh, follow the Trump. He knows everything. Uh, Trump's... <laughs> If you knew about Trump, you'd know Trump was the front man for the bankers in 1970 when New York was falling apart. 
And he stood up and they gave him all this money to buy up all these shitty old buildings and restore them. It was, that was the banks working with the front man, just, just like every other fucking experience in life. But here we are all these years later. And, oh, Trump's such a wonderful guy. No, he ain't. If he's so wonderful, then how come you're not having coffee with him right now? I'm having my coffee with the wonderful people of the RLM. Thank you very much. But, uh, I don't know, politics, please. I did say that, didn't I, Mr. Vincenzo? But it all goes back to honesty. And that opens up the door of, you only see that word in the light that you were raised in. How, how can you see my version of honesty through your own version of it? I don't think people are taught that other people might see it differently. We're taught... This is right and this is wrong. And it works on a few things. Murder, theft, uh, some forms of abuse. Maybe not verbal because I like to inflict verbal abuse on a willing idiot every now and again. Um, But we know these things. So if you participate in that shit willingly, then you're, uh, you're still being honest, I think. You're just being honest with you and not with everybody else. So honesty Hmm. we could just chop that word up into 57 pieces by the time i'm finished with it it looks just like a pile of shit nobody have any fucking clue what it was when i started so either what i'm i'm picking up out of my you know the point i brought this up for me to speak out loud and hear what i was going to say about it somewhere in my mind I seem to be leaning towards an answer that honesty is treated like it's fluid in society, but I don't treat it as fluid in my living, my daily life. Honesty has its stone. It's etched in stone. It's something beyond etched in stone. Whatever's beyond that, it's still even harder than that. And it's a, it's a conscious, aware thing that I feel I do. Because I don't want to mislead people and tell them shit I don't mean. But I'm kind about it. And not speaking Danish offers... uh, That gives me a lot of room. Because it's very rare anybody's going to bring up anything in English that's confrontational. And I've even managed to tell a few people uh, without speaking either English or Danish between the two of us. Uh, place in town they were looking for because I recognized this this name of the store they were looking at and I told them no go that way oh and then they did and <laughs> there they were when I finally showed up because I don't drive <laughs> I just walk but that's fun too I still love my walking walking around the crazy streets of Freddy town and to uh today at closing time from the train the train uh has a cigarette bar, uh, cigarette store in like a 7-Eleven a kiosk. And the guys drink out there on the back side of, of the store away from the train. And they were out there holding court today, about five of them. And I see them, and they smile, and I smile, and we wave. And that's how life is. And the, this is the this is the hardcore in, in the town I'm in. You know, just... Uh, a group of guys that society doesn't they they're the they're the ones that really don't like Denmark's rules they're obviously living outside the rules they're the ones drinking in public and it's not against the the law or the rules it's an identifying thing you know if you got a family and shit you're probably either in the bar or you're at the house but you're not hanging out at the uh, train and i don't hold these people in any less regard than i do people i do trading with i think you know everybody's deserving of what they put out so if they're smiling and saying hey like the guy that calls me jesus i still run into him every now and again and he's got to be 75 80 years he's an old man and he rides around real fast in one of those buggy things but uh, i don't know we're just trying to survive another dork table and I got 30 minutes to make up a full table and a, hmm, well, honesty is a, 
it's a long drawn out complicated thing or it's not so one way is right and one way is not right for me that see that that's what the dork table's been about not about how you do it what you're doing what i think you're doing wrong if what i think you're doing is wrong there will be results from what you're doing to prove whether i'm right or not and i think donald trump's performance in in the office that he supposedly holds is just as pitiful as the nigger before him or the nigger before him or the nigger before him they're all the fucking same and if they're not the fucking same the cia will shoot you and put you down like a dog they did that to kennedy mm. and again not because he was such a fucking wonderful guy he wasn't but he did try to save the save the dollar and no nah, you can't do that and this guy this trump fuck He's not going to save anything. He wants his. I don't. He that guy could be ninety years old and he'd still want his. He's the most greedy fuck I've ever. I've never seen a greedier fuck in the public eye, beside Donald Trump. So Hansel, that was for you. So you know I was paying attention to your stupid president. <laughs> president. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't think of anything the guy's done since he got elected. Besides, be getting elected and supposedly keeping Hillary out. I don't know. The same wars that were planned are still get taking place. Syria is still getting the fucking ass kicking. Israel fucking shoots down the Russians. The Russians say, "Oh, it's okay. We don't mind." And the world doesn't fucking notice. There's something wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't hear a lot of people giving that a lot of attention. The Jews can shoot people out of the sky, kill fifteen, and that's that. Okay, next. So that's. I want to be on the Jew team. I think the Jews are going to win. <laughs> I mean, crying out loud. Obama bitched all openly about having to deal with Nutty Yahoo when he was in power. I think it was uh, Nutty Yahoo in power in in um, eleven. One of you uh, people that's good with the history. I might have the wrong years and shit, but if I recall, Obama made a comment <laughs> off the cuff about about not Yahoo. He goes, "Yeah, well, you don't have to talk to him every day." <laughs> I heard him say that on a link. <laughs> I thought, well, <laughs> see, there you go. That just goes to show who's the bitch in that relationship. Yeah, because it's always the the what do you call it? the uh, dominant partner that forces the partner the other partner to do stuff they don't want to do, and if that wasn't Obama being the under dick in that fucking duet, going I don't want to do it, but I gotta do it, so I do it. Well, I thought he was the president of the most powerful country on the fucking planet. The United States, home of the goddamn A-bomb. You people could went to the motherfucking moon, right? But uh, Netanyahu pushes Obama around like he's a house nigger. And he don't like it, but he ain't going to change it. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> and now you got Trump. Trump's over there move, moving Jerusalem around. <laughs> hey, well, we'll just put it here. <laughs> Nobody's going to mind. Everything's okay. No, he moved an embassy, an American embassy. But, wow. Uh, to me, I don't really give a shit. I don't care if they put the fucking American embassy in, the, in, in hell for all I give a fuck. Embassy. Please. But. What I got out of it was seeing that orange-haired bastard sucking on a wall with a beanie. He looked like a cartoon, <laughs> but he, you know, he made his way. You know, he promised the Jews he's going to do their bidding and they're going to let him live, and things are going to get worse. So I would suggest to my fellow people out there in the real world, if you are indeed in the real world, that. Um, I would do is pay attention. <laughs> Can I have some more? No? Okay. Anyway. Shit should be, I don't know, maybe not stirring. If it doesn't happen, at least it's stirring. I, last thing I saw that was violent was that shit in Portland. And I didn't really 
pay a lot of attention. I opened up a link to make sure they were actually doing what they're saying, but I didn't watch like 30 minutes. Couldn't sit through all that. You know? it's, it's different when it's TV and it's make-believe and it's reality. Mm. I'm still not for the other you know, people duking it out in the street. That's just... If that's where your political opinion takes you, then your politics are fucking broken. I don't despise them. I mean, f probably for fuck's sake, I might very well be one of them. I probably have, I, uh, have the like leadership abilities in being a mean prick, you know. So evil. I don't know. It's all a matter. Of, it's a matter of interpretation. Yeah, but that you know what bullies. Wow, but that's another thing. It's another man-made. This, what I get at when I say we're taught wrong, we're we're raised, the, brought the worst out of us in some in some cases. You know, bullies are neglected. That's why they're doing that. Pay attention to me. Look at me. Oh, uh, uh, uh. wow. Why would you need all that? Because nobody ever smiled at you, or maybe you're uh, breastfed by a pit bull, or. Who knows? People. I don't despise people. Um, I despise the the ideas that were sold, you know, the lies that were tricked into believing. That's the problem I got with all this government shit is these fuckers lie about everything, every fucking thing. And there's people within the government at certain levels of, I don't know, how would you call it, legal lawyers that are stepping up. There's a, a insider group of um, Federal Reserve Bank players that want to bring down the Federal Reserve, right? Uh, I kind of get the feeling that it's just another layer of the onion. You know, it's they're not going to bring anything down. If it collapses, it have to completely fucking collapse. It can't just morph into something else. That just keeps the game going. So I think they're feeding us this illusion that somehow they're going to restore the fiat to a gold-backed standard. And nah. I saw that shit from Trump, and it, it looked like it would take about 12 years to enact the shit that he wanted to do, or that's necessary to do, to right this fucking wrong, as Vinny would. I'm stealing that from you, because that's the way it would be. Um, yeah, Vinny's dropping names on the RLM because he met Hal. Because Hal is a very private person, so I would I would be throwing that around, Mister uh, Drop a Name. Vinny, someday there's going to be a kid looking at a picture, you know, and he's going to go, "Hey, Dad, who who's this guy in the pointy hat sitting next to Vinny?" Oh, that's the Pope, Johnny. <laughs> Never mind. You know, because everybody knows Vinny. Vinny is, well, <laughs> Vinny is Vinny. There's no two ways about that, anyway. But, okay, I'm getting an agreement about the social engineering, right? And I think that when we speak about it out loud on the radio, other people too, that the, the person listening uh, feels talked down to. You know, I never, I saw something on TV that made me think of that, you know. Or I saw a link about being condescending. You know, said people say I'm condescending, and then underneath in parentheses it says that means I talk down to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So there's probably no way to hear what I speak about on the on the radio without having some preconceived notion about it. If it was new territory, you'd be open to, hey, what the fuck is he talking about? But it's usually met with either the rejection, instant rejection, or, oh, yeah, I know that. Well, yeah, if you know it, I'm just preaching to the choir and trying to be entertaining, give you guys a giggle through the afternoon or something to think about, right? You know, it's not real complicated. And besides, it's fun. It's me doing this radio myself. I still, to this day, I go out looking for other people doing radio. And some of the people that I enjoyed over the time I was listening to them have stopped doing the shows they were doing. But now I've got other people to listen to to replace them. But the uh, the topics are different because now I'm falling more into um, how people see 
the cage that we're in, you know, we're in a fucking open air prison, all of us, everybody. That's why I need a passport to pass a border. It's not complicated, you know, I, I know what that means, but what I wasn't planning on doing was settling down. So now there's nothing, (laughs) see, it's, it's the, the answer is the end of the problem. So there's no more traveling. And if I need to travel, I just do it. But I don't need to. There's no necessity in my life making me do anything. Just circle, <laughs> I guess. Circle line can get me to do stuff that I don't want to do. <laughs> do who puts you to sleep, Rob Works? Are you guys chitter-chattering about some other great guy on the radio? Oh, how? Oh, yeah, Rob Works doesn't care for how. Uh I don't, I don't think that Hal's uh, incorrect or any of that shit. I, if I was a statist-minded person, which you're not, Rob, so I understand your stand. Um, I wouldn't. I like Hal when he's more when he's talking about other things besides the legal stuff more than when he's talking about the legal. But he's right. If you're gonna fight these people, you gotta know the. You got to know every step of the road you're on to fight them because it's going to be harsh and the things set up against you to lose and it's full of lies and just deceit. So you need to break through all that and there's ways to do it, but it's not what we think it is. We've been taught bullshit. We've been taught to hire a fucking lawyer and who gets pushed the hardest? Hey, hire the Jew lawyer. They're the ones who know how to get you out of shit because it's a big club. (laughs) that's <laughs> all this shit is the lawyer the lawyer the more time you do <laughs> because uh look at the statistics what is it two million people in america and i think it was 80 percent of that is marijuana related charges <laughs> except at the federal level that's just the state so uh progress and honesty and all these other crappy fucking we just get you know who they should have put on the scotus i got a great nominee but i'm too late steven tyler from aerosmith i mean can you imagine steven tyler on the fucking supreme court (laughs) hey that bitch knows how to break a law come on think about it guys Hey, I like Hal. I mean, damn, don't, you know, if you don't like Hal, I don't see why. He's just voicing his opinion strongly about stuff that he understands in a light that you don't. That's the Admiralty Court and how it functions. And if you're in the state, then that's what you got to do. And if you're not like me, then it's not applicable. So it's good to know I have the, uh, I've got the information of should I ever need to use it. But I don't plan to need it. So, uh, like, what was that? I think it was Henry Ford was how how you are, Rob, about, I don't need to, or Vinny, I don't need to know the answer. I, I've got a computer. You know, I've got a phone book. I had a phone book. If I needed something, I w- would buy and sell things. And if I needed a certain product, I had this list of companies to purchase what I wanted from. And I would shop and <laughs> see who would give me the best deal on the amount of whatever I wanted. And that's how things worked well, you know. Um, working with people, you know, being nice to people is real fucking easy. And it's profitable. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't foresee having any trouble with anyone ever again in my life. Except Hansel on the RLM because he's a Republican thinks Trump's going to fix it all. <laughs> I'm sorry I got to laugh at that. I, you should check out Rule of Law Radio. Who should? Me? Uh-oh. Oh, Rob. Oh, yeah. No, I I support both of you, Rob Oryx, because your stand is more like my stand than his. House. House is more the work with the state. You know, deal with them on their own ground and know what they're doing, which is really hard to do. My way is um, as little as possible interaction brings the least about uh, interest in me. You know, they don't want nothing except money. So I just, that's all I do now is just not 
work, go out of my way to, to bring a lot of attention to myself, bring in a lot of money, and then life goes on. Because in the end, that's all anybody gives a fuck about. Not people, government. Government doesn't give a shit about me unless they can't get their cut. So as long as I'm honest with them about finances, I don't have to worry and, you know, try to hide shit and what people do in, to stay alive where I'm from, you know, because, well, here, I would say here a lot less of the, of the value of the, of the transaction is in taxes than where I'm from. And here they got an openly higher tax bracket, but okay, if that's the way you see it, the folks i live around seem to be comfortable nobody's scrounging for shit i mean the beggars are doing better than um some people with jobs where i'm from logos radio network that was for art flash oh i'm just rob this is difficult for me my mind comes in and out um i lose touch with reality every now and again after i took on my pipe forget where i was at Bring up all these deep, important things and then start. Squirrel. <laughs> like, like Mary without the links. Mm. But I would, I would just like to stir up that idea in somebody else's mind. And, you know, not so much for the conversation of it, but, you know, just to get other people interested in the idea. What is honesty to you? How far do you really take honesty in your daily life? Do you actually apply it to anything? And if you do, you got to understand all these good intentions that we have are all interrupted by shitty food, lousy electricity, fucked up air, poisoned water, medicine, religion, education, politics, every fucking thing that's supposed to be there to, to help us through is actually a pitfall so we can't ever get anywhere. And wow, it's just, I mean, they've even made it so that if somebody is to pursue a, a, a college education today, hey, I'm trying, did I mute myself again? Hey, cakes. But if you're going to go to college now, try to get an education, you come out of it in debt to the government. Well, that that's new. That that wasn't like that when I was young. The government did that. So what what is the point of going to college if you're coming out of college owing the government a hundred grand? What are you ever gonna get? So they've they've robbed us all with our own consent of all the freedoms that we think we got are a bunch of crap. You got nothing. They own the property, they own the water, they own the air, they own this, they own that. They charge us for every fucking thing we do like that, as though they own it. So I would assume because of the, the compliance all around me that there's really no choice but to comply. I'd like to go against it. Then I'd probably be on a one-way ticket back to America. So, mm. But what, what can you do? Oh, oh, oh. So I'm stuck in, I guess, in the same boat here that uh, my peers back home are stuck in today. Because, fuck, the police are armed like goddamn military. And they've showed you a couple times, you can't, if you fuck with them, they'll burn you out. So, hmm, no. I even heard a link the other day about uh, the military was planning to set off a nuclear bomb off the coast of South Carolina but they got stopped they were shut down but they were in the midst of doing this uh, wow could be bullshit could be true but just saying it see I didn't start it but here I am saying it but I don't know if it's true or not back to honesty see the sources of my information are all uh, suspect. They've all been proven to be bullshit. So, hmm. I'm supposed to sit here, and I'm supposed to just go, well, if you say so. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Jesus Christ, I think enough people do that already. But, be the one person that says no, and you usually attract, you know, problems. 
So, what are we going to do about all this? I don't think there's anything we can do except sit and wait out the uh, inevitable crash of the U.S. dollar. Ooh. Well, that one's going to piss a lot of people off, and it's going to happen financially. It has to happen. It's a cycle. It's not anything I made up. Everybody involved in this horseshit said since they've been talking about it on the Internet that I can tell, it's doomed to fail. It will crash eventually. But like they did in 2008, they propped it up. Okay, I don't know how many times it's been propped up since 2008, you know, at the levels of Federal Reserve Banking that isn't disclosed to the public because we're a bunch of idiots and we don't need to know. <laughs> we wouldn't understand. It's far too complicated for you people to understand. Yeah, it's far too complicated to understand that we're paying you to make something we could make ourselves with no without paying you for it. Hmm. I smell a fucking rat somewhere. But maybe it's just that I've got that um, ability to think. <laughs> just because you tell me so doesn't... That's never good enough. It never was good enough. Whoa! Now we're all competing on the interwebs about libraries and studies. Well, I made it through... Um, I don't know, what was it? 15. I was, no, I was 16 because of the driver's license, but I didn't really do anything. I just went, took my driver's license crap and left. <laughs> so, but they didn't give me, now they give you credit for doing that. They give you credit for showing up. I read on the internet, it's uh, the federal government has taken over the education in the states so well, reagan did that right in the year reagan did it one of his promises when he was running for president was he wasn't gonna fuck with the with the education system and one of the first things he did was sucked it up like a biscuit and puck and gravy <laughs> and here we are now now you got kids fighting about what toilet to use because they're so educated they're they're trying to explain they're they're trying to, to pass off to me uh, as a member of the reading public that, that a five-year-old year old needs to know about sex. And I'm thinking, what the fuck planet are these monkeys living on? You know, Good God. When I was five years old, I was playing in dirt. Give me a break. I, girls? What the fuck was a girl? That took a few years, please. So, the you know, the state is pushing it. And they're pushing it behind our backs, too. Because you, you're not part of whatever the state does with the kids. They got them <laughs> they got them doing shit behind your back. And they ask them questions like, do your mommy and daddy drink? Do your mommy and daddy smoke? Do your mommy and daddy blah, 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 blah. And they fill out little forms on their parents. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a brilliant game. I wish I would have thought of it. you know. And you'd figure, being a Jew, I'd just kind of fall into all that kind of uh, abusive, take advantage of the next guy ways to make money, but I shied away from him after 20, uh, 27. That was it. I said, no, <laughs> nay unto you. Let's see. Uh, I had the owner of that side on as a guest. I should do a new show and get an update from her. Here, her, her. I said her. That was Rob Works, and yeah, Rob... I'm all for you doing a show. I like your radio. Uh, I prefer my own when I do it with somebody else because got somebody to argue with, except arguing with myself. But we survived another dork table at the RLM, Real Liberty Media, by God and country. And uh, there's not, uh, not a lot of traffic over at the realliberty.org as of yet. Not a lot of participation from the players. I remember the good old days at WT. I used to write a blog and people would comment on it for hours. And we'd have all kinds of arguments and fights about our perspectives on this and that and the other. And, oh, well, I guess it's summertime still and people are just too busy to write down on what they're thinking. So I got on here. And figured I'd say something about it. <laughs> I don't know. I'll comment on your shit if you write it, I'd say. But I usually get uh, approved of when I do. I try to keep my comments to a minimum. I don't go too far with any of it. It's a monkey planet, says the Grimner. Yeah, it probably is, huh? 
And the el ever elusive great Grimner ape, says Vinny. Hmm. Oh, let me get the direct link. <laughs> That's Rob talking to uh, Art Underground. Anyway. Oh, yeah, we got somebody coming on after me tonight, right? Or no, after Hal tomorrow night, not me. Uh, right? Tomorrow, somebody say yes or no to that one. And uh, I'm closing up here in a few minutes and letting you get back to your heroin addiction and free of my voice, you lucky people. Anyway. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, we got. Um, I'm not sure. Put if you post the name of your show, I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it on the link to, uh, on the radio, so get that much more people to hear about it. Cause the the RLM is a very tight lip group until we go run around and tell everybody about it. I posted Cowboy Tech's pictures from last week on my uh, Minds page. Got a little traffic on it. Whoop, and it's saying. Hannah's saying hi to the world. Hold on a second. Hey, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Ooh, right at the end of the show, Hannah's such a ham bone. Hey, I made it for an hour and 55 without the dog barking. I did good. I'm proud of myself. And there you go. Rob Works posted a show he did in the past on the Smoke and Mirrors podcast archive on Real Liberty Media. And, uh, yeah, we've had some fun with the radio. I saw Venor. Oh, jeez. He was fun. I enjoyed that guy. And he was harsh, too, man. Boy, he had a way of telling you that you were stupid if he thought you were stupid. And I think that insulted a lot of people. Me? I don't know. I don't really care. I just think if you support the present system that is operating the way it's operating and doing to us what it does to us and you're voting for this shit that you're responsible for all this negative crap not me i don't want any of it i want them to stop everything so my voice isn't going to be heard in a vote please i'm not insane They're, they don't even give, give me the option of end all this crap we're doing completely right now <laughs> which is what they should do if you want to save the planet, just stop everything and start over. And, hey, Vinny says hi, Hannah, because Vinny loves our, yeah, Vinny loves our dog, too. We have dog lovers. Yeah. We got friends in the interwebs that like dogs. Hmm. Anyway, so what we got coming on is this is Saturday. Uh, Saturday is just me today, and then after that, we've got tomorrow. And Grimner usually plays some blues before, well, pretty early in the morning, I think. Um, I lose, see, I got the time. It's my afternoon, so I got to do the math. I, I thought 9, 10 o'clock in the morning his time when he gets a couple cups of coffee in him and he puts on some blues. Then we play some trivia. Well, I try, and then I, I can't do it. Man, I suck at that fucking trivia. I can't type to save my ass. But. I play. Anyway, then after the trivia, then we got Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. And after we got, now we've got the new show coming up with, somebody write that down and I'll I'll read it. I don't know what he's got, but Art Underground. Oh, Straight Talk 101 debuts on Sunday, October 14th at uh, 5 o'clock. So he's after Hal Anthony tomorrow. And then uh, during the week, we got Grammy coming in on Wednesday night. She missed last Wednesday, but she said she's supposed to be coming in Wednesday. So we should expect to see her uh, restart the plane. <laughs> no, man. We, we need to stop everything we're doing, Vinny. It's just everything is wrong. You know it. I know it. We've talked about it. Hey, we'll, we'll on a perfect world, well, man, we've got perfect world material for fucking months now now that you know we've done a few so i get a feeling for what you were trying to accomplish because yeah i i think my mind i know what a perfect world is but my reality i don't because i'm not living in it you know i'm living in uh a damaged presence with really bad input and negative results from my fuel so somehow i got to find a way to fix this or control it so that the damages uh, aren't permanent. You know, I'm going to croak eventually, but let's... Okay, uh, 
I, okay, I'm at the end of my thing here anyway, Grim, so I don't know if you're talking to me, but uh, let me make sure I update my thing, and good night, everybody. Thanks for playing with the Dork Table this week, and we'll see you Tuesday when uh, me and Vinny get back.